Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. American government policy has had a disproportionate and mostly negative approach toward Venezuela. That topic was the focus on a recent Chicago panel and the focus of this segment. As a researcher in international communication who closely follows Latin America global media and political and social change in the region, my study, including several research trips, interviews with media workers, officials, and participants in missions in Venezuela, and a close reading of international press coverage, I would say Venezuela is not a threat. Do you know that even the director of U.S. national intelligence will not describe Venezuela as a threat? The threat in this hemisphere is U.S. intervention, U.S. interference. You want good examples? You want hope? Look at some of the accomplishments. ABC News reported that nutrition has doubled in the last decade in Venezuela. UNICEF reports that infant mortality has been reduced by a third. The Guardian newspaper reports extreme poverty has been reduced by 74%. UNESCO reports that illiteracy, Venezuela was illiteracy free as of 2005. In fact, the literacy rate is greater in Venezuela than in the United States. You want an example? They've built 13 universities in Venezuela in the last 15 years, 30 million people. You know what they've done in the 38 million population of California? They've built 22 prisons. <laughs> um, but again, what is it very important that this year, we're going to have a parliament election. And again, this is where, where I believe the vast majority of the people want our differences to be resolved through elections, not through violence, through, you know, that's a very important. Who always promote this idea that Venezuela is against Guyana? The right wing in Venezuela, the position. Uh, it's quite interesting, actually. But, um, and I'm sure that whatever the result is, we will carry on this process of integration. And yes, that controversy, that matter, will be discussed where it should be discussed, but not in a confrontational manner or whatever. So, yeah. What took place in Latin America in the last 10 years is a clear example that something else is different from all the neoliberal policies that have been taking place in most of the world in the last 20, 30 years. Um, and, uh, and to show that yes, something different can take place where people become the core of policies. This idea that the economic policies should serve the people and not the other way. Uh, an example where to show that it is very important to have a state to respond to the need of the people. We're trying to build a more decent society in Venezuela. Um, a more equal society where people can get access to the free education, free health, no matter their background, no matter who their parents are. Equal opportunities is what we are trying to do, and a more decent society, yes. I keep looking at the clock, and it strikes me since we started to this minute, 30,000 kids have starved to death in the world. That doesn't have to be. The richest 435 people in the United States have as much wealth as the 90% of the rest of us. They don't have homeless people in Cuba. They don't have people without medicine in Cuba. They don't pay for college in Chile or Denmark or Sweden. That's hope for a better future. Venezuela may have problems, but Venezuela has taken what Cuba started to another step. We, as American people, could take it to a step that would change human history and our relationship to the environment. That's a hope, and that's inspiration.